Hello everyone. Warm greetings from Bangkok. This is Vitit Mantaborn. Idahut is a time for us to celebrate our joint actions against negative actions coming from those who are not so open-minded. It's also a time to commemorate in terms of remembering those whose lives have been impacted upon negatively. And we're here to partner to strengthen our commitment to protect people even more effectively. Today, we are in the midst of COVID-19, and it is a critical time for LGBTI community and other communities. I'd like to reflect from two angles. Number one, how human rights through the experiences of LGBTI people can inform COVID-related actions even more. And secondly, conversely, how COVID-related actions can also inform, through LGBTI people, the human rights perspective. Let me take the first angle. Human rights informing COVID very much entails two elements. Number one, non-discrimination, and number two, non-violence. In that spectrum, LGBTI people are still faced with discrimination, including, for example, criminalization of consensual same-sex relations in nearly 60 countries. We do call for very much decriminalization of consensual same-sex relations. And secondly, in that regard also, we also call for gender recognition, gender identity recognition, in terms of helping transgender people self-recognize, self-identify, and be validated by the legal recognition at the state level. On the other front of non-violence, we are sadly faced with a lot of not only physical violence, but also mental and verbal violence, particularly through hate speech. And this has also arisen in the era of COVID. So, non-violence from this perspective enables human rights to inform COVID in terms of needed actions against hate speech and incitement to hatred, including broad education, empathy, awareness raising, counter speech, and sometimes also the need for some laws against incitement to hatred, as well as policies and related practices. Those are elements of human rights which inform COVID-related actions to be more sensitive to the issue of discrimination and violence and to counter them. Conversely, how do COVID-related actions inform human rights? I believe there are three entry points which are very much with us today. Number one, the need for more effective prevention. Today, you can see in the media that in regard to COVID, we talk very much about three Ts, test, trace, and treat, particularly to help prevent the spread of COVID. Well, preventive action pertains very much to the lives of LGBTI people too, in regard to human rights related actions, particularly calling for good mobilization, good education, good networking, good laws and policy to prevent violations, to prevent discrimination, to prevent violence. Secondly, from the COVID perspective, we are also informed that we need to protect better people who are in vulnerable situations or special situations. We think today about non-nationals on our territory, such as migrant workers who are impacted upon, marginalized in regard to COVID-related actions. Likewise, of course, this informs very much the need to take even more effective ac action to protect people in regard to their sexual orientation and gender identity and gender expression and sex characteristics, LGBTI. More protection of rights. Thirdly, COVID also tells us to try to mitigate the situation and remedy. There's no cure 100% in terms of prevention of COVID at this point in time, but mitigation is possible through various actions. 
And from a human rights perspective, of course, we look to mitigation as well as remediation with accountability. Those who are not so kind, not so nice, should also be accountable for what they do not so nicely to others, whether those affected by COVID or those in the LGBTI community affected by human rights violations. So those are some thoughts together for the future. So Odd Idahod is with us today to enable us to partner, to strengthen our commitment, to strengthen our actions even more in these difficult times of COVID, bearing in mind that we must be resolute in overcoming discrimination, violence, and we must be better prepared with more effective prevention, preventive action, protection, protection measures, as well as mitigation and remediation. I convey my warmest to you all and wish you all the best. Keep safe, keep strong, keep kind, keep cool, keep together. Love you all.